Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about the infamous split flow plumbing. Some people are still a little bit confused about the split flow plumbing, how it works, and what's the purpose of it. And what, that's understandable. Something a lot of people used to have nightmares about back in the day. So on this video, what I'm gonna try to do is clarify it a little bit more. I'll go into a little bit more detail on um, the split flow and see if I can clear it up for some of you guys that may be questioning it and, you know, and not sure what exactly it is and how exactly it works. All right, so we're gonna jump into that right now. I have a question coming from Blue Ridge Prepper. What's going on, man? And it says, my wife and I are currently looking at building a large scale aquaponic system. I'm not understanding why the flow would be split. So this is a good question here, Blue Ridge Pepper. And um, I wanna give you um, some wishes on your large scale aquaponics. If you ever get out there and decide to do it and you guys put it together and go through with it, you know, I want to give you guys some some wishes and some blessings and hopefully you guys are very successful when you guys put it together. Um, so with that being said, let's jump into the, uh, the split flow. So what exactly is the split flow? We'll talk about that first. The split flow plumbing arrangement. So what it is, it's basically pressurized line. Your, your main pressurized line being split into different sections. So you have your main line that's carrying the water uh, under pressure. And what you're doing is you use maybe like a PVC T and you're gonna divert that flow. One flow of it, or one part of that flow is gonna go to the fish tank and another portion of that flow is gonna be supplied to the hydroponic subunit. So you're basically just separating the flow um, under the pressurized line, opposed to just having the pressurized line go to one component and then supply the rest of the components under gravity. So that's basically how the, what the split flow is. Now the purpose of the split flow, this is what you want to get to. The purpose of the split flow, when it, what it really boils down to, is just allowing the grower to have more control um, over the flow that's entering into the system and also having more control over the operation as a whole. Then this is uh, specifically um, uh, relevant to when you have to do maintenance. Like for instance, we'll talk about the floating raft. When you have to do maintenance on a floating raft, which you will have to do, when you have the flow uh, split, what you can do is you can just turn off the flow. You turn off your uh, ball valve your flow entering into the, um, the raft and the water will not uh, continue flowing in here, but the water will still flow to the fish tank, making that just a fish only recirculating system. That's where the, you know, one of the main perks of having a split flow. Like for instance, I had, um, I was actually weighing the fish from that, the back system that you see back there in those fish tanks. So I was pulling fish out of there and one of the fish it went for it. It just dove like, you know, did a smooth dive right on top of the raft and it ended up wiggling into one of the holes and it got into the raft. Well, anybody who's been doing aquaponics for a while, you know, if tilapia get in your raft, you know, those roots are going to be destroyed. They're going to go to work on those. So what I had to do is I had to take the hydroponic um, subunit, the floating raft, I had to take it offline in order to drain the bed out and get that tilapia out of there. But while I did that, I didn't wanna, if, if I didn't have a split flow or still have water and nutrients or, or, or water and oxygen going to the fish tank, then I would have to cut the whole system off and there would, um, you know, that would stress the fish. So all I had to do was just cut it off, the ball valve off to the um, floating raft and I still had the fish tank being supplied, you know, with, um, with water, fresh water and oxygen. So there's gonna be times where you have to do maintenance on your floating raft. When you have to get out there and clean 
the bottom of it, you have to clean that sediment uh, from the bottom of the um, of the raft. That's going to happen, you know, one or two times a year. We're going to have to clean it up. Those fine uh, particles that end up settling down there on the bottom of the raft, that's going to have to be cleaned up. So you're going to have to take it offline. And if you have fish in there, you're going to want your system to keep running, right? So that's one of the um, the benefits or purposes of doing the split flow. Another one that I do it for, this is one of the particulars, the details, is for adjusting the flow and nutrients coming into the bed. If I have the bed filled up with more plants, then I'm going to want to increase the flow coming in there, right? If I have them with relatively a uh, few plants in there, then I'm going to want to decrease it and then allow more um, flow to go into the, um, the fish tanks. So these are just some of the particulars that it boils down to, the, the small details that it boils down to when you're doing the split flow with a floating raft. Now, with the floating raft, one of the things is if you don't have to have it split off of the pressure, the pressurized line. So if you want to do like a traditional, you know, one loop system where it goes from the, you know, the sump tank under pressure goes into the fish tank and then to the filtration units and then into the floating raft and then it makes its way back under gravity. All that's coming down under gravity from the fish tank under gravity into the, uh, the filtration and, to, and then to the, um, the floating raft and then back to gravity uh, under the, back to the sump tank. If you wanted to do that, a traditional type of setup, there's a way that you could do it, which that's the UVI setup. There's a way that you can divert the flow because you're still going to need to divert, divert that flow to keep, your, um, to keep your fish tank running if, when you do your maintenance on the floating raft. What you can do is, as it starts to move under gravity from the fish tank to the, um, the filtration, right between the filtration and the floating raft, what you're going to want to do is split that flow right there, that's under gravity, you're going to have to split that flow and have that part of it, the option of that uh, plumbing to be able to go back to the sump tank. Therefore, you can put your ball valves on there. And when you do need to take that, that last piece, that uh, your, your floating raft offline, you can just cut the flow to the floating raft, open the flow, going back uh, under gravity to the sump tank. And that will keep that in a loop like that. You see what I'm saying? While you do your work. And you can still have your fish in there um, being supplied water and oxygen, fresh water and oxygen, filtered water and oxygen, I should say. Right. So that's the way that you can get out of that um, if you wanted to do that type of setup, because a lot of people will do that type of setup. If you're doing a um, commercial setup, you're definitely going to want to uh, more, more than likely look into what has been working, you know, in that setup already, which is the UVI system, you know, something of that sort. So they're going to have it in a, a single loop and that flow is going to be diverted. You're going to want to add that in there. All right. So now when we're dealing with NFT and vertical systems, this is where I say that the split flow is a necessity, right? When you're doing the, the, the vertical NFT, you're typically going to be dealing with relatively small tubes that are going to be feeding the plants with water and nutrients. Now those small tubes, what happens, um, is over time, they're going to get clogged with organic material. And that's going to be inevitable. Now, the rate of clogging is going to depend on a few things. The filtration that you have, the old filtration that I used to have, it used to clog every other day. You know, and I have to go out there and, 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 and check the lines. But when I, when I upgraded the filter, the, fil uh, the clogging only occurs maybe once, once a month once every five, six weeks that I have to go out and, and actually hit the, hit the line and get that clogging out of there. Now, and that's with a, uh, the lines being supplied under pressure, right? That's under pressure. If you try to gravity feed those, you're going to have a, you're going to have a long day, right? So uh, you need to have those under pressure split. So when it's coming from the sump, a part of it needs to go to the fish tank area. Uh, absolutely, it has to be filtered first. It's getting filtered uh, under the bead filter um, configuration. It's going to be filtered first under the bead filter. Then a part of it is going to go to the fish tank. Then the other part is going to be going to the um, the vertical or the NFT system, right? And that's where it's going to be supplying that pressurized um, water and uh, nutrients that flow. From there, you can adjust it with your ball valve, open it up, close it, 
but, but you need to have it under pressure in order to push that organic material through because it's still going to be coming through and eventually it'll accumulate to where you need to come through and maybe have to put some pressure on it manually in order to unclog it. Right, so those two systems, I would say absolutely, you need to have it under pressure. The floating raft, you can still work with it under gravity, just because of the nature of that system. Right, so that's what I would um, uh, suggest for that. So keep that in mind. So hopefully that has helped you out. This is kind of like a little bit more in detailed uh, overview of the split flow plumbing, but there's still more particulars to it, but I'm not gonna get into it right now because it, it just will carry on the video for um, longer than what it needs. But in the gist of it, it's gonna give you more control if you have a floating raft, because I'm assuming you're gonna do, be doing a floating raft. It's gonna give you more control um, over the flow that's going in there. It's gonna allow you to take that raft offline while you're doing your, um, while you're doing your maintenance and keep the fish portion online, right? If anything happens, because things do come up, right? Things do come up. For the NFT and vertical, you're gonna wanna split automatically, under pressure. And you're not gonna wanna be dealing with gravity with those systems. Under pressure with that. And that's gonna push that organic material in there or push it through and prevent it from clogging up, right? But over time, it's still gonna ev eventually clog up. If you use the small tubes, the real small ones. Now, if I upgrade the tubing, then the, the clogging is, you know, it's, uh, it may not occur, but it still may occur over time. I just have to test it out. But right now I'm testing the, I think these are like maybe a fourth of an inch tubing. So these are thin, relatively thin, you know, small tubes that are in here, but they're holding up when, you feel, when your filtration is, is on point and you have it under pressure, right? So hopefully that has helped you out and given you, uh, you know, more insight on the split flow and what it is and the purpose of it so that you can go ahead and find out you know, if that's something that works for you, right? So thank you once again for asking this question. Hopefully everyone else out, out there has, you know, gained some more clarity and you're able to um, go ahead and, you know, and, and think about it when you're putting your system together. So if any of you guys out there have other questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll um, make sure to put it on the list and help you guys out. Make sure some good questions, put some detail in there, you know, um, get specific with the questions. The more specific that you can be, the more specific I can be when answering it. And we can get into, uh, you know, those particulars in aquaponics, the little things that you might not see, you know, uh, looking around other places, right? So with that being said, if you guys want more help, you can go to the school of aquaponics.com. We got paid courses, free courses there, you know, learn the fundamentals of aquaponics. That's going to get you growing, get you right on track. And it's going to give you a core understanding of how aquaponics works. So you can skip all the other stuff and you can get right to the core of aquaponics on what you really need to know in order to get your system operating and functioning. Right. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys out there for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. Until next time, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car.